Okay, guys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Um, here is... Here is... A start to chemistry. Okay, so we're looking at C2 chemistry now, obviously. Um, C2 chem. And we're going to start off with an introduction to the periodic table. Okay, so... Um, what we're going to say firstly and foremost is what the early periodic table was like okay so there was this guy by the name of Dimitri Mendeleev Mendeleev and he actually made what he did was he arranged the periodic table arranged all the elements that he knew of in terms of their relative atomic mass I'm going to look at that word in more detail later, okay? Uh, but basically, the hev he put them in order from lightest to heaviest, and he arranged them in groups, okay? He arranged them in groups, and we're going to cover what a group and a period is a bit later as well. So, when we're covering that, remember Mendeleev. Um, and what he did that was really, really interesting was he actually made some predictions, okay? So, there was some stuff that was just not around at the time, um, and so he left gaps in the periodic table. So he, w once he left those gaps, what he said is that uh, in periodic table, and he left that because he said, you know what, I know what the characteristics of the elements are, characteristics, and I know how they behave. So he kind of looked at the behavior of the elements in different situations. And so he left gaps, and what he predicted was that after some time, these gaps, these elements would be found, and he was right. Once they found the element, um, they fit pretty much what he said. They fit his prediction, and this was really one of the best periodic tables out at the time. Now, it is different from the modern periodic table. For example... He got group 8 wrong, completely wrong. Okay, so he got group 8 completely wrong. But this is understandable uh, because as you learn later on, uh, but we'll just touch on it now, group 8, also known as group 0, um, are completely unreactive. And so finding them in the first place is going to be quite difficult. And you got to remember, this um, Mendeleev was... Um, in 1869 okay this is when he was being the gangster that he was the the intellectual gangster like you know obviously he's not a gangster but uh it was in 1869 when he was uh doing all of this stuff so uh so there was no way to kind of find these unreactive elements because obviously you know something exists when there's a reaction if i poke you in the eye everyone in the room is going to know that you're there because you're going to scream and shout there's no way to make the group 8 elements react, so it's very, very difficult to find. But we'll cover that in another topic, okay, in another video. Um, so, that's that. Let's look at the modern periodic table now. Okay, so I'm just going to delete all of this. And we're going to look at the modern periodic table. Now, this is the one that will be in your exam, okay? So, you will have access to this in your exam. I'm telling you right now, guys and girls you need to make the periodic table your friend because if it's not your friend it will be your enemy and you don't want an enemy in your exam okay so let's look at the periodic table and see what it's all about this is the modern day periodic table now the first thing is what I want to say really is we're gonna understand how the periodic table is arranged so if we look here one thing you gotta realize guys is that this direction here I need to decrease the how opaque this uh, thing is so otherwise it won't show up okay so if we look at this bit here along so if we do it along here right you gotta remember this hydrogen and helium are in group period one okay so this is period one now a lot of people make the mistake and say period 1 starts at lithium, it does not. Period 1 starts at hydrogen and helium. Now period 2 is all of this. 
up to, from lithium to neon this is period three from sodium to argon guess what this period is that's correct period four period five is all of this period six is all of this and period seven is all of this so you got one two three four five six seven now guys the way to remember that the periods go across is that periods right make a girl go cross or make girls not a girl all of them go cross make girls go cross what a crude way to remember something eh? so the periods always go across the way to remember that is because periods make a girl go cross now so that's periods done now one thing I just want to mention is this one here hydrogen now this is should be in group one so let's talk about groups first and then I'll mention that later so this one here is group one now you won't have these numbers in the exam paper so this is kind of a kind periodic table but this is group one this is group two right group three starts at this side here with boron then group three then group four then sorry three group four group five group six group seven and group eight or group zero okay it's often called group zero but it's also called group eight so this these are the groups now I want to just talk about so groups go down and periods go across so groups go down as we're seeing it starts from top to bottom uh, top to bottom top to bottom that's the direction it's going in and periods go across the way to remember is if you know that periods make a girl go across you know that groups are down so let's look at this one here guys hydrogen hydrogen's a bit weird okay now hydrogen here is it's in period one as we know but what group is it in because it's not really in a group right it's in the middle well actually it belongs to group one right and as you learn later on in this video it has one electron in its outer shell right? so because it's got one electron in its outer shell it should belong to group one however the reason why it's floating in the middle is because group all of these are metals all of these group one are metals and hydrogen is not a metal it's a non-metal and it's a gas okay so that's that we've covered groups we've covered periods we've looked at the early periodic table now we're going to look at the next thing okay which is where are the metals found and where are the non-metals found so to find the metal and the non-metals right there's a stairway to the answer right the stairway answer is here so you see this is aluminium we come down and we make a stairways we make a stairway all the way down to polonium I see everything on so I'm gonna just highlight it so all of this including the stairway and all of this on this side and these two as well these two groups all of these are metals every single one of these are metals and so everything on the right hand side of the stairway so all of this in other words all of this all of this all of this these are non-metals now guys you should have a periodic table in your planners if you still have those so you can perhaps annotate your periodic table on your planners so everything on the right of the step line are non-metals anything on the left of the step line are metals and the step line starts from aluminium and goes all the way down to polonium okay so the I, I want to cover a couple of other things on this video before I kind of um, leave it okay so I'm gonna take a couple of examples I'm gonna take aluminium right I'm gonna take oxygen and I'm gonna take lithium okay so now you can't really see on this periodic table very well unless of course what I do this may help I'm gonna increase the opacity of the picture yeah so that's okay so yeah uh, it makes it a little bit better but it's not that good so I'm gonna flip to my periodic table here at the back of my 
a textbook or I do have a textbook like that. Uh, okay, so let's take the periodic table and let's take uh, lithium for example. Okay, so if we take lithium we're going to find out and we're going to describe and explain what the different uh, numbers mean okay so here is lithium now you can't really see it on this periodic table but that doesn't matter because what I'll do um, I'm gonna make a note on here of which one I'm covering okay so I'm gonna I said I'm covering lithium aluminium and what was the other one oxygen okay so these are my three examples that I'm gonna use so I'm just gonna get rid of this periodic table now um, so now let's go with lithium first okay so lithium has a top number of seven and a bottom number of three okay so what what do these numbers actually mean so this seven is the relative atomic mass okay it's called the relative atomic mass and it shows the number of protons plus neutrons okay that's what it shows now I'm gonna explain something about this bit afterwards okay and this one here uh, is called the it's called the atomic number okay also known as the proton number this is the atomic number aka proton number and this shows the number of protons only However, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons in a neutral uh, element. So if you take any element from the periodic table as it is, the bottom number is going to equal the number of protons as well as the number of electrons. Okay, so let's have a look at this and let's do some num maths with this. Okay, so if I take lithium here and I take it seven at the top, three at the bottom, I need to work out what I call the pen number. Okay, so how many protons does it have? How many electrons does it have? How many neutrons does it have? So the protons we know is this number here. So it's three, it's got three protons. Now we know that the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. So that's this number again for electrons. And the number of neutrons is if we take the top number away from the bottom number, that will give us our number of neutrons. So that's seven, six, five, four. Four neutrons. These are my neutrons, these are my electrons, and these are my protons. Right? P E N. Now, let's look at the next one which we said we're going to do, which is um, aluminium. So aluminium has a top number of 27 and a bottom number of 13. So if we take aluminium, it has a top number of 27 and a bottom number of 13. Now where am I getting this guys from? It's from the periodic table. Okay, I do not know all of this by heart. If I'm using the periodic table guys, everyone's using the periodic table. So um, let's take a look at this one here. So again, this is the total number of protons and neutrons. This is the number of protons, which happens to equal the number of electrons. So let's have a P, E, N. Right, so how many protons do I have? Now guys, you can pause this video and do it yourself, and then look at the answer. You can do it for aluminium and oxygen. Do it yourself, see if you're right. So the number of protons is 13, because that's the bottom number. The number of electrons is also 13, which is the bottom number. To work out the number of neutrons is 27, take away 13, which is 7654 to 114. Uh, so it's 14 uh, neutrons. Now let's do oxygen. Okay, so oxygen has a top number of 16, a bottom number of 8. Here's your opportunity to pause, guys and girls, if you want to. Um, so let's do the pen number, the protons, electrons, and neutrons. How many protons does it have? Well, that's the bottom number, 8. How many electrons does it have? Well, that's again the bottom number, 8. How many neutrons? It's 16 minus 8, which is equal to 
eight neutrons. Okay, so that's how you work out how many protons, electrons, and neutrons any element from the periodic table has. So what else do I want to cover? Oh, now I wanted to cover electron structure. Okay, so if we go, I'm going to use lithium, aluminium, and uh, oxygen again as my example. So I'm just going to make a note so I don't forget lithium, aluminium, and oxygen. Now, uh, like we said, guys, let's. I'm just going to look at general rules. Okay, so if I write lithium here, actually, you no, know I'm not going to write lithium. I'll tell you what I'm going to write. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna make up an element X. Okay, this is a made-up element just to demonstrate a point. Okay, now this element is going to have an electron shell. These are my electron shell, and I just want to illustrate something. Okay, so this element has. It's making it up, guys. It's completely made up. Electron shells. Now I just want to make this up so that I, you can understand. You see, this inner shell the first shell can have a maximum of two electrons only it cannot have more than two electrons the first shell the second shell can only have a maximum of eight electrons it cannot have more than eight electrons however what I want to cover is how to actually draw the electrons on there is a correct way to draw it on because if you don't draw it this way when you come into ionic bonds and covalent bonds you're gonna mess up big time okay so this is how to draw it watch so you can have a maximum of eight. This is how you draw them on. One, two, three, four. Then you pair them up. Five, six, seven, and finally eight. Now, the next electron shell. Now, all the other electron shells from this point on can have a maximum of eight. Now, I'm going to pretend that this stops at six. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, one two three four now we're pairing them up for five and six okay so that's my uh, so this is my electron uh, structure and my electron configuration if i was write this in a code it would be two eight six because the last one had six or so two eight six now if we wanted to work out the identity of x or what is x in reality we can just add all of these up so um 8 plus 2 is 10 plus the 6 is 16 so I've just added all of these up basically to give me that um, so 16 I'm gonna look at my periodic table for the bottom number because remember the bottom number is equal to the protons and it's equal to the electrons and what we've just drawn is the electrons so I'm gonna have a look at my periodic table this ladies and gentlemen is sulfur because sulfur has 32 at the top and the number 16 at the bottom so it's going to be sulfur my mystery element element x is sulfur because it has 16 electrons now let's have a look and draw it for lithium and aluminium and oxygen now guys here's a good chance to pause the video and try it yourself and then come back and see if you're right so lithium again it's seven at the top three at the bottom we want to work with the electron structure so we're working with this bottom number here so I'm gonna write lithium in the middle draw my electron structure remember I can only have two maximum in the in the inner ring so let me change that color okay so that's you can tell the difference so lithium is one two so I've got my two but I need one more because we've got a maximum of three and bam lithium has been drawn okay and the electronic code for this would be two comma one we've got two in the first ring electron shell one in the other electron guys remember these are called electron shells okay so that's a lithium done guys again uh, pause the video see if you can have a go at aluminium yourself so here's aluminium aluminium remember has a top number right. now guys i said remember don't remember it just use your periodic table okay because that's what i'm doing i have not remembered this so aluminium has a top number of 27 and a bottom number of 13 right so again we're working out or we're going to draw the electron structure so we're looking at this bottom number here so i'm going to draw my rings so that's ring one i know i'm going to need another ring now 
if you think about it, I can have a maximum of eight in this ring. I can have a maximum of eight in the second one and two in this one. So that's a total of ten. So I'm gonna need another ring. If you just think about it, it makes sense. So let's draw on our electron cell. So maximum of two in the first ring, one, two. Now I need thirteen, so I'm gonna keep adding. So that's two I've already got. Three, four, five, six. Now pair them up. So that's six in total so far. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've used up my eight here. I need to make more. So I've got ten in total. So ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And that's my thirteen electrons done. So the configuration, the code, would be two, eight, three. I've got two in my first ring, eight in my second, three in my final ring. If you add them all up, it makes thirteen. Now Finally, let's do oxygen. Oopsie daisy. So, next is oxygen. Uh, so, oxygen has a top number of 16 and a bottom number of 8. We're working out the electrons, so we're going to use the bottom number. So, again, guys, pause it if you want. Uh, so, now this is like an O, so it's going to confuse you with your ring. So, I'm just going to write, I'm just going to write oxygen. Okay, so that it doesn't confuse me. Uh, so, I'm going to have one ring here. So that's going to be two. And I have another ring here. So I won't need any more because I just need a maximum of eight. So let's draw on the electrons. I've got one, two, maximum of two. I need to move on now. Two. I've got, now I've got three in total. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And so now I've got eight in total. Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the electronic configuration code for this would be 2 in the first one. And how many have I got in my second one? 2, 4, 5, 6. So I've got 6 in my second ring. So that's 8 in total. 6 plus 2 is 8. Um, and that's it. So is that it? Do I want to cover anything else? No. So for this video, I'm done. Okay, guys. So I'm going to pause this video. If you've got any questions, you know where to find me. Um, Have I, have I not even, oh my days, I think I might not have even recorded this, come on, don't let me down now, ah, oh, I did record it, haha. <laughs>